Today I have some exciting news that brings us closer to the release of MuseScore 4, as well as highlighting some new features that we can expect. Feel free to jump to that section of the video that most interests you. Okay, newsflash! The public alpha for MuseScore 4 has been released. I'll put a link in the description down below if you want to go and try it out. But a big warning before you do that, once you have saved a file in MuseScore 4, you can't open it up in MuseScore 3 again. So back up all of the scores you have before opening them in MuseScore 4. Remember, this is not the stable release. This is just an, a public alpha that the developers want the public to try out and test. So it could still do funny things to your scores. However, I believe that this version is now ready for most people to try out. There are still a few features missing, and if you want to know what those are, have a look on MuseScore's forum page in the announcements section. Again, link in the description. More news? The new Orchestra Playback Library. It's not in the public alpha, but we've been told that it's coming soon. They're just finishing up the last tweaks on it. The developers have been very quiet about it, not even giving us any samples to show us what this new library can do. Okay, feature update. Gradual tempo changes. In MuseScore 3, the quickest way to achieve a writ was with a plugin that you needed to download and install separately. It worked well, and it had great customization of the curve, but it was perhaps a bit cumbersome and not so easy for beginners to use. Now, gradual tempo changes like writ, accelerando, and rallentando are included in the palette. You might need to click on the More button to find them. I would advise adding these to a custom palette if you're going to use them regularly. It's now easy to add ritardando, accelerando, rollantando markings, and to customize how much they affect the tempo. I would still prefer to have some BPM control or beats per minute, but this solution works nicely for now. VST playback now has dynamics. I've already mentioned in a previous video how amazing it is that MuseScore supports VST playback. That is, using third-party libraries to play back your scores in MuseScore. One of the recent updates that has been added is to map MuseScore's dynamic markings to the VST's dynamic controls. This is a big step for getting great sounding playback in MuseScore with VST instruments. This is timed perfectly with the decision by Spitfire Audio to release their BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover library for free. Combined with MuseScore 4, this will give music students a great way to get started with orchestral composition playback of individual staves or combinations. So, in previous MuseScore versions, if you wanted to hear individual instruments, then you had to open the mixer, find the solo control for that instrument or combination, then playback. And inevitably, you'd close the mixer to see the music better. Then forget that you had that solo setting in the mixer. No more. Now, you can select the instruments and the selection you want to hear, and MuseScore mutes everything else for you, then unmutes once the selection is cleared. This is a huge workflow improvement, since listening to solo instruments or combinations of instruments is a common necessity. And finally for today, the Learn section. In the Welcome screen, there are options that we would expect for opening old scores, starting new scores, but also a section for linking your MuseScore.com account, something I'm not really interested in, a section for enabling plugins, I'm not sure if any of them have been written yet, but it could provide some interesting add-ons, and at the bottom is the Learn section. This is essentially a quick link to MuseScore's YouTube page, but includes some great new videos on getting started in MuseScore 4. The Advanced tab currently has a bunch of ancient videos from old versions of MuseScore, but perhaps some of my videos might end up there someday. There is also a tab for classes, which links to Mark Sabatella's Mastering MuseScore classes, which you can pay for and sign up for separately if you want to go for a deep dive into MuseScore. Remember that MuseScore is open source software. That means that anyone can use it for free and anyone can contribute to it as well. The best way that most musicians could contribute to this development is by testing out the alpha and letting the development team know what's happening. If you get bugs, report it to them, either on GitHub or on the MuseScore forums. I'll keep an eye out for further news of MuseScore 4, and I'll let you know.